Hello, my name is Liz and I'm the Technical Marketing Engineer for the Cisco Nexus 1000V. Today I want to demo the installation app for installing the Nexus 1000V Virtual Supervisor module. Now if you're familiar with the Nexus 1000, you know that we introduced this installation app um, as of our software release 4.04 SV1.2. Since then, we've come out with some enhancements and also added some functionality to the installation app um, that I want to demonstrate here today. So we're going to go through this real quick. Um, I don't know if we'll make it quite uh, under seven minutes like we did the last video, but we'll, we'll try our best. All right, so here's my setup. Uh, I'm going to be installing my VSM on this host right here, my 172.25.182.103 server. In order to get started, we're going to come up here and deploy OVF template. Now, I've already previously downloaded the OVA file to my desktop. So if you scroll to that and click open, we're just going to go through this pretty quickly. Uh, this is just a summary of the template details. Again, it'll tell you the code release. So now we are on uh, Nexus 1000 v 4.04 SV 1.3 release. Um, and also, it gives you a description that we're installing the Cisco Nexus 1000 v Virtual Supervisor module. So go ahead and accept the end user license agreement. And it'll take you to a place where you can choose the name and location for your VSM. I'm going to leave it as is, and it's going into my TME Lab uh, data center. Here you'll have the choice of either using the installer app, which is what we're going to do today. You'll also have the choice to manually configure the Nexus 1000V if you'd like. Leave it on installer, click next. It'll ask you to where you want to store your virtual machine files. Um, my storage is this Clarion here, so. And then we'll get to where we enter just the first part of the credentials for the 1000V. So the admin password, the management IP address, the subnet mask, and the IP default gateway. All right, this will bring you to the final page. This is just a summary of everything that we've entered in so far. You can go ahead and check over that real quick and click Finish. Uh, this will only take a couple of, of seconds really to deploy, and what it's doing is it's creating the virtual machine that's going to house our Nexus 1000V Virtual Supervisor module. So once that's completed... And go ahead and close this window and we want to come over here and power this on. Now after I power it on I like to watch the console because this is how I can tell when it is uh, ready and reachable. Alright so once you see the command prompt you know that it's reachable and we can come down here open up a browser and browse to the IP address that we set as the management network. It'll bring us to this page where we can launch the installer installer application. Now you're going to need Java, remember, in order to run this installer application. All right, and it'll bring us to this. Now, if you're familiar with the 1000V, you notice that we have a couple new steps here, step 7 and step 8. And you can see that this is some of the functionality that we added to the installation app, where is after we've created the or configured um, the Nexus 1000V VSM, we actually give you the option to migrate it over to the 1000V. So we can use this installer application now to migrate our host as well. So we're going to go through that part. Let's get through the first, uh, let's get the first six steps first. We're going to enter in the VSM password. Oh, that's the wrong password too. <laughs> and look, it'll tell you that's my authentication error. So we can try that again. That should be right. We also need to enter in the vCenter IP address and the username and password. And we'll, it'll do a check for you uh, on these credentials as well, and it'll prompt you if you um, miss, miss enter them. Choose the cluster or the host that uh, were installed the Nexus 1000V VSM on. Um, here you'll have a choice. You can either do a default or an advanced configuration. The default is going to use the management VLAN for all packet control and management port groups. 
The advanced allows you to configure these separately. So a control port group with a control VLAN management, with a management VLAN, etc. I'm going to stick with default because it's the easiest. So this will bring us to the page where we can um, start entering in the VSM config options. Things like the switch name. Uh, we'll do Nexus 1000B13. The admin password has been set. The management IP, subnet mask, and default gateway. Check that those are correct. Then you can enter in a domain ID. And you want to make sure that this domain ID doesn't conflict with any other 1000B domain IDs that you may have out there. Uh, check that the data center name, that we are in the correct data center. And then enter in the vSwitch native VLAN. And I'm going to enable Telnet and click Next. This is the summary. Again, you want to check over this real quick, make sure everything's correct. And click Next. And this is going to take a little while. This is actually the configuration of the VSM. Once this is done, um, a pop-up window will say that it's completed and we can move on to the migration step. All right, so once the installation is done and the VSM has been configured, it's going to bring us to our migration options. We have the choice of either migrating the host or leaving the host on the uh, VMware's vSwitch. So we're going to go through the migration process. So simply check uh, the radial box there for yes, click next, and it's going to bring you up uh, the configuration that's going to be created for the migration purposes. So you'll see here that we're going to actually make port profiles for my control management and packet. And they will be labeled as such, um, system control, system management, system packet. We're also going to migrate these virtual adapters, and it will list all of the virtual adapters you have here that will be migrated. I just have the service console. It's going to create a uh, port profile for that service console interface. And also the physical adapters. So these are the physical adapters which I have um, connected to my uh, physical host right now and all of those will be migrated over to the Nexus 1000B and they will be using this uplink port profile that will also be created. So you can just you don't have to actually do anything on this page you just notice what is going to be configured for you and you can click finish and it's going to go through the installation process. Now this is going to take another couple of minutes so once it's done uh, we should see a pop-up that comes up that says it's complete and we'll move on from there. All right, so here's that pop-up that says it's completed, and it's completed successfully. You can see that it lists out your vCenter connection uh, details, and that status is connected. Um, it also does the network configuration details. So now we're pretty much done. We can close this. All right, so one way to verify this would be to telnet into our VSM and check out the uh, running configuration that we have on it. If we do a show run, you can see that all those port profiles that were um, made in the migration have now been configured on my VSM. The other thing that you can do from a module perspective is do a show module, and you can see that now that host that I had installed my Nexus 1000B VSM has been migrated to the VSM itself, or to the Nexus 1000B itself. You can also make sure in vCenter, um, if we go to this host and we look at the configuration, uh, the virtual switch no longer has everything on it. Instead, it's been moved over to the Nexus 1000B. And you can see here um, that our uplinks are all in the uplink port profile down here, as well as all of our virtual, um, our virtual interfaces. So the service console port has been migrated over. And then our virtual machine, our Nexus 1000B VSM, is actually living on top of it. So that's pretty much it. That's at the new uh, migration portion of the installer app that's available for the Nexus 1000B in the software release SV or 4.04 SV1.3. Thanks.